In the last part, the battle between the kids and Boo began, but it was inconclusive, so Goku told Boo off. Once safe, Goku trained them fusion despite their lack of motivation. We left off with them training on their own. So let's continue. As they're losing sensu beans, the two kids are at a tight spot since they didn't know just how much energy Super Saiyan 3 is taking up. Regardless of that, Goten and Trunks do a bit more training and then heal up, ready to go back. On the way there, they suppress and hide their key so that Piccolo doesn't know they're going out of the time chamber. Piccolo is still trying to find the two, considering them lost inside the chamber, so he keeps looking. Goten and Trunks get to the gate and eat up before leaving. Piccolo senses that the time chamber ambiance changed to his own mental thought, so he knew that they exited out of the chamber. Outside, Goten and Trunks go for round 2 with Boo, but this time they decide to battle Boo together. They sense Boo and engage in battle. The two are a little bit more powerful due to the instant Zenkai and have more control over their Super Saiyan 3, but that's about it. They can't do much more than last time and are both sent to the ground. Piccolo comes to them and attacks them both for being so stupid, but Goten and Trunks easily evade. Piccolo tells them to fuse and that they just might have a good chance at winning. As much as Goten and Trunks don't want to fuse, they still try it, hoping for it not to work. They do the fusion dance and it works perfect for his try. They fuse into Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and look at themselves, seemingly confused. They see that it's actually not that bad to be fused, it's just not up to their ideals, so they mention that. Piccolo is amazed at the power of the two, but is wondering under control. Gotenks is quite an experienced fighter and isn't as dumb as in canon, so Gotenks starts gauging Boo for a little bit. Boo is getting annoyed that he can't land a single blow on Gotenks, meanwhile Gotenks is just dodging and toying with Boo. After Gotenks got annoyed after a few minutes, he throws a key blast and manages to damage Boo big time. However, Boo reforms himself and gets angry, ready to throw a giant key wave at Gotenks. Gotenks responds by charging a Kamehameha and with it, they throw their blasts at each other. It comes to a wave struggle with Gotenks barely struggling against Boo. Gotenks then puts all of his power in it and overtakes Boo big time. Boo is caught in the Kamehameha and is properly disposed of. With Boo now gone, Gotenks is about to make a comment to Piccolo but ends up defusing. Goten and Trunks laugh the fusion off and they go back to the lookout. Goku calls out from the other world and congratulates the two kids on beating Boo and the Supreme Kai is more than grateful to them for that same reason. In this case, Goku is still not revived and considers himself not needed to be revived, since he has his son and Vegeta's son to take care of Earth and even Vegeta. Vegeta is mad he didn't get to fight Goku, but that is all bound to change, cause after about a year since Buu, everyone is just chilling. Goku came by again for a full day and is debating on whether to revive himself or not. Literally everyone is up for it, but they know he can't get revived by Earth's Dragon Balls. So they instant transmission to Namek and ask for their Dragon Balls to revive Goku. The Namekians are happy to accommodate and let them use their Dragon Balls to revive Goku. Parunga is summoned and Goku himself made the wish. With Goku now back, Goku also asks for everyone on the King Kai's planet to get revived as well and so King Kai and the rest of the goons also get revived. They come back to Earth and Chi Chi is crying from joy now that her husband is back. At the same time, Goten and Trunks took up training on the world of the Kais and are training with the Z Sword. Since they're kids, they use their human playful nature to fuck around with the sword and end up breaking it, resulting in the old Kai getting released. The Supreme Kai now knows what was actually going on with the sword and why it was so special. Either way, Old Kai opted to unlock the potential of the kids, including Gohan, who was sent there to babysit them. The kids say they don't like free power, as they would like to train on their own and attain that power on their own. However, Gohan didn't have a problem with that, as he said that he would like to have a bit more power in his arsenal to protect his new family and Earth in general. And so, Old Kai went ahead and started unlocking Gohan's potential, with Goten and Trunks cringing at the visuals of the process. While all that was happening, Beerus awoke 
and had a dream about something he cannot remember. Whis asks him about the whole sleep to get him to remember, but it's too difficult for Beerus to remember. Setting that aside, he goes and does his destroyer duties as of now. Back to Gohan getting his potential unlocked, the old Kai has to unlock a whole lot, so it takes a long time. In that time, Kibito teleports the kids home as they don't have anything better to do, nor do they want to see the cringe ritual to get Gohan's power out. Either way, they continue the training back home in a gravity machine, still honing Super Saiyan 3 and getting stronger. Chi Chi is mad that Goten is constantly training and calls it out on his father for being exactly like that and forcing Trunks to train with him. Goku knows what his son is thinking, so he just shrugs it off. After a few excursions, Beerus still has no idea what he dreamt about and the only thing he remembered is a silhouette of someone or something. Whis may be able to help with that, suggesting to talk to the oracle fish and ask him about the whole thing. Beerus agrees and they come back and ask the oracle. Despite oracle's bad memory, he finds out of the super saiyan god and his prophecy. Beerus now recalls it all and asks about the saiyans and so Whis checks his staff and sees that a few saiyans made remarkable progress, almost all of which are from the same family tree. He mentions that the one called Goku killed Frieza. One of his sons defeated some menace called Cell a few years back and his youngest son combined into a fusion with Vegeta's son who defeated Majin Buu just recently. Beerus is astonished at the fact that the Saiyans defeated both Frieza and Buu and is quite interested in them, wondering if Goku is that Super Saiyan God considering his offsprings are also immensely strong. Nothing compared to him but are plenty strong. He wishes to visit the closest one of the three. Whis mentions that one is getting his potential unlocked by the old Kai. Beerus is disappointed to know one even broke the Z-Sword, but they still go. In the realm of the Kais, Gohan is nearly done with the mystic ritual. Old Kai senses something bad going on and checks his crystal ball. Turns out that Beerus is awake and alert, going straight towards them. He can only hope he finishes in time, so he tells Shin to go and stall Beerus for him. To which Shin is very scared to do, but he cannot defy the words of his elder. Before long, Beerus arrives and the old Kai just finishes the ritual and tells Gohan not to try anything yet, as Beerus is much more powerful than him in every regard. Gohan listens and goes to meet Beerus. He's acting all formal but Beerus isn't and cutting straight to the chase. He asks about the Super Saiyan God and of course Gohan doesn't know anything about it. Beerus is annoyed so he decides that Gohan is of no use and that he will just visit Earth where the rest of the Saiyans are. That gets Gohan very worried as well as the rest of the Kais. Beerus leaves with Whis and Gohan wants to get to Earth before Beerus does to warn them all. So he asks Shin to Kai Kai him there and get him there and fast. Shin does so and once on Earth they see it's not just chilling but they ended up on Bulma's ship where she's hosting a massive birthday party. Gohan and Shin run up to Goku and Vegeta saying that Beerus the Destroyer has headed their way towards Earth. Goku and Vegeta don't give a single shit but still ask what he is. Shin elaborates Beerus is his polar opposite and compared to him he destroys instead of creates and has unfathomable power even by their standards and knows for a fact that he's going to earth so treat him with utmost respect. Gohan remembers to talk about the Super Saiyan God and asks if they know something about him as Beerus is looking for him. Neither of the Saiyans know anything about a Super Saiyan God but then get an idea to just call for him with the Dragon Balls so that they satisfy the Destroyer. In no time, Beerus arrives and now Gohan and Shin are scared shitless. Beerus sees the rest of the Saiyan infestation that managed to survive and he specifically gazes upon Goku, slowly floating towards him. We're continuing the series next time. While you wait for the next part, join the T22 Discord server with the vanity URL down in the description. Thank you for watching and with that, peace out.